Hello everyone. Today we shall uh, discuss different measures of uh, money supply. First of all, we should understand what is money. Money is uh, a means of payment. It can also be considered as a lubricant that facilitates uh, different exchanges in the market. It is also a store of value and a unit of account. But for policy purposes, you can say that uh, uh, money is the set of liquid financial assets, the variation in the stock of which could impact on aggregate economic activity. And uh, as a statistical concept, uh, it is treated as uh, uh, certain liquid liabilities of a particular set of financial intermediaries or other issuers. Now, uh, in India and in different uh, con other countries, uh, uh, there are different measures of money supply and in India we use M1, M2, M3, M4 and uh, some new measures also have come. Today we are going to discuss that. So what is M1? M1 is uh, including uh, currency with the public plus uh, demand deposits with the banking system plus other deposits with the reserve bank. So currency in the public means this is the hard cash we all possess plus the demand deposits that is with the uh, banking system when we say demand deposits basically these are all saving accounts and uh, then other deposits with the reserve bank that is M1. Then we have a second measure of money supply that is M2 and M2 includes M1 plus saving deposits of post office saving banks. So here we are adding the post office saving banks. And then we have M3. M3 includes M1 plus time, time deposits with the banking system. So that means here we are adding both saving deposits, saving account deposits and also the fixed deposit. Time deposit means the fixed deposit. So M1 includes currency with the public plus demand deposit of the banking system plus other deposit of RBI and in M3 we are adding time deposit or the fixed deposit with the banking system and then uh, which will be also equal to the net bank credit to the government plus bank credit to the commercial sector plus net foreign exchange assets of the banking sector plus government's currency liabilities to the public minus net non-monetary liabilities of the banking sector. Then we have M4. M4 includes M3 plus all deposits with the post office saving banks but it excludes the national saving certificates. Then we have got a new measure of money supply which is basically recommended by the working group on money supply, analytic and methodology of compilation. Uh, this was uh, basically chaired by Dr. Y. V. Reddy, Y. V. Nagopal Reddy, and uh, that was published in 1998. So uh, now we are going to discuss the new measures of money supply. And uh, in this new measure of money supply, which will be N M1, N M2, N M3, N stands for N new M1, M2, M3. Uh, these are basically based on the residency concept, and hence uh, do not directly. A reckon non resident foreign currency which is repatriable uh, fixed deposits in the form of uh, FC and our foreign currency uh, deposits uh, and the resurgent India bonds and uh, India millennium deposits. So, then what is uh, uh, NM1 or uh, new M1 we can say uh, which is equal to currency with the public plus uh, demand deposits with the banking system plus other deposits with the reserve bank. Then new M N new M2 that is our NM2 uh, which is equal to NM1 plus certain time deposits of residents uh, which includes uh, uh, basically uh, up to the contractual one year uh, up to one year contractual maturity period and uh, then we have NM3 and then NM3 uh, includes uh, basically NM2 plus long term time deposits of residents plus 
call or term fundings from financial institutions. And then we have L1. L1 is equal to NM3, uh, that is new money uh, M3 plus all deposits with the post office saving banks, excluding the national saving certificates. Then L2, L2 is equal to L1 plus term deposits with the term lending institutions and financing institutions plus term borrowing by FIs, financial institutions plus certificates of deposit issued by the uh, financing institutions, early financing institutions. L3 uh, is equal to L2 plus public deposits of non-banking financial companies and then uh, so those are all measures of money supply and then we also have a measure called the reserve money and reserve money is equal to currency in circulation plus bankers deposit with the reserve bank plus others deposit with the reserve bank which is also equal to net RBI credit to the government plus RBI credit to the commercial sector plus RBI's claims on banks plus RBI's net foreign assets plus government's currency liabilities to the public minus RBI's net non-monetary liabilities. We are going to also discuss some of these concepts. Then when you say net bank credit to the government, it includes the net RBI credit to the government which is uh, net RBI credit to the center plus net RBI credit to the state governments and plus other banks credit to the government. So this is basically net bank credit to the government. And then when you say bank credit to the commercial sector, this includes RBI credit to the commercial uh, sector, RBI credit to the commercial sector plus other banks credit to the commercial sector. And when you say net foreign assets of the banking sector, uh, it refers to RBI's net foreign assets plus other banks foreign assets. And when you say net non-monetary liabilities of the banking sector, this includes RBI's net non-monetary liabilities plus net non-monetary liabilities of other banks. So this is all about the old measures of money supply plus new measures of money supply and reserve money. I thank you for watching the video. You may like, comment on my video and share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching.